totaled due to love bugs. This truck might as well been totaled out due to love bugs because removing this many love bugs on this large of a surface bills around four hours at the local Ford dealership. Four hours times 165, carry the one. Well, I, I'm just not too good at math, but I still don't think that's enough to total out this truck. So, oh, well, here's why it's totaled. Someone's kid drew on it with a yellow crayon. Recently, I started looking for a cheap pickup truck and ended up with this. You guys use the comment section to quickly remind me that this is not a real truck. So I started searching for real trucks and darn, they're expensive. If I'm gonna spend $80,000, I'm gonna buy a wrecked Ferrari and Lamborghini. But those are two different ideas for another time. All right, so yeah, I don't really shop new, but even at the salvage auction, newer, nicer trucks still sell for a premium. And I could never justify buying a wrecked one and putting a ton of time and money into rebuilding it. Just Dreaming, I hopped on my favorite salvage auction site and did a quick search. I wanted something not too old, not too many miles, and a decent trim level. Oh, and it has to be a Ford. I found this truck and the pictures look too good to be true. Yeah, a salvage title, but where's the real damage? This is something that looks like it could be fixed in less than a day. I first verified it was being sold by an insurance company, and it was, so I put it on my watch list and I figured it would sell for way more than I was willing to pay. Quick numbers, a truck like this in average shape with these many miles would retail, clean title of course, with no major damage for around $35,000 thousand dollars at a dealership used so my comfort level would be around twenty thousand dollars all in worst case scenario just from looking at this listing i would put a parts and labor budget around five thousand dollars which seems way high but you always have to account for a few thousand in unforeseen circumstances auction day came and i won this truck for only fourteen thousand two hundred dollars a steal in my opinion well that's as long as the damage is as straightforward as it looked in the photos all right it's been a long time coming you guys have asked for a truck rebuild and i really just need a great work truck and that's what this is a 2014 Ford F 250 Super Duty Lariat with four wheel drive. It only has 60,000 miles on it, and it looks like the previous owner used it as a commuter car. I mean, the interior is immaculate, and the exterior is in really good shape. Sometimes these pickup trucks, even with low miles, can be just beat because people do use them for work. But this is an amazing example. And as you already saw, the repairs on it will be really simple. We're gonna knock out the majority of those right now. This truck's gonna require no paint, no body work, super straightforward work all right here in the front. And we're gonna start by disassembling things just a little bit. We're gonna take these headlights out which will gain us access to the bracket that holds the grill in place that was broken off. You can see a section of it right here. We're also gonna pull out this damaged condenser and replace it. So let's get to work. All right, we've only spent about 20 minutes on this, removed our headlights, really simple, and removed the plastic shroud that was in pieces there. I've got brand new ones for both sides. But I noticed something that I didn't notice before when I ordered all my parts. Now this happens all the time when you're rebuilding a car. I'm gonna hop up here on our tow hook, and if you kind of look down in the radiator area here, I don't know how well you can see that, but it's indented in pretty well. So what happened is the bracket for this cooler right here pushed in and dented our radiator. This radiator does not seem to be leaking. I know the car does not overheat because I've driven it. However, that doesn't mean that now because it's been hit here and somewhere between either the plastic tank on the side or maybe just the metal part of the radiator itself is fatigued, this could let loose way earlier than it should. And so I'm gonna go ahead, run out to the parts store. I've located one of these for a really good price, about 180 bucks, and we're gonna replace the entire radiator while we're in here. That's cool, it doesn't look half bad, but one of the nice things when you get a new radiator, you're just going through a new coolant in it. It's really inexpensive, and it's something that a dealership would charge you probably over $100 to do a coolant flush. So we're gonna get all fresh coolant in our F-250.
radiator is out and we're starting to come to the end of where any of our damage is. Now when you look at all the metal supports back here, everything is straight. Nothing was damaged, but the corner of the shroud here was cracked. Now since a shroud is a mechanical like a radiator, I wouldn't go and actually pay to replace this. This shroud would probably easily be a few hundred dollars to replace. This is the piece that came out and it fits back kind of like a puzzle piece. So what I'm going to do now is get some plastic epoxy or some panel bond, whatever I have left over in the workshop, and clean this up and then epoxy it back together. Next morning our panel bond has dried and this stuff is incredible. Remember this was split all the way down here. This was also split all the way up here. I mean look when I move this it moves the entire support. No flex in this anymore. Here's our piece that was broken off. I can push it. Really really nice repair. I know it's unsightly. This is what's called an Uncle Pete job. My Uncle Pete always used to tell me goop the you know what out of it. And I know that's what this looks like. This is a functional fix. Now we need to install our radiator back before we move the truck back up front to finish the final front end assembly so that when we actually drive it, it doesn't start gushing oil from the oil cooler and every other fluid that has an open line right now. Everything has been coming along so nice so far. Simple stuff here. This radiator took about an hour. So collectively, we're only a few hours in this rebuild and we're almost finished. These shrouds on the side here are brand new. They were both pretty torn up from the accident and they were really inexpensive at the dealership. And we also did transplant the shrouds off of our old radiator that were in fine condition to the new one. All we gotta do now is take the condenser. We're gonna mount it up. We're gonna hook it up. And once it's hooked up, we'll vacuum it out make sure it holds a vacuum we didn't mess up any of the lines there and then we are also going to install a lower mount bracket we're ready to put the whole front fascia back on this truck and make it look like a real truck again all right now that everything has been installed on the front end we're going to want to put a vacuum on our AC system, and while we're doing that, we can move on to the grill assembly. Man, I'm grateful that this grill came with the truck. You'd be surprised how much this entire grill costs as an assembly. Now we have a Lariat trim truck, which means you get that chrome front grill, you get a chrome front bumper, and you get the chrome rear bumper. Some of these trucks that are actually nicer have painted front bumpers and grills, and those are even more expensive than this one. So just the ring that we'll be replacing right now, you can see my ring was damaged down here cost over $300 and that's a wholesale price from the dealership so if you just walk in off the streets it would be more like $400 and we're also going to replace this upper piece right here that upper section costs about 140 bucks so just to repair this grill we're going to be in it uh, almost 500 bucks so if you had to buy everything including that massive ford logo i mean you're talking close to eight nine hundred dollars and if you had the platinum grill you're talking well in excess of a thousand dollars all we got to do is take apart the back of this grill separate it from our old ring and then throw on the new ring
check it out. The front end of the truck went together perfect. We're gonna put this slat in when it comes in in a day or two. And then we will get to the front bumper area. And I'm gonna tell you about that in just a second. But our AC system has been holding a perfect vacuum for a long while now. So let's get in the cab, turn the truck on, and recharge the AC system. All right, we've started the truck. Yes, I know we need fuel. And recharging your AC system is a really simple task, something that shop charges, you know, $100 or $200 to do. So we've got our AC system off right now. We wanna have it turned on, and we wanna put it on the lowest temperature that it will go. We definitely wanna make sure our AC light is on here. That will kick the compressor on when we add the refrigerant. Now we've got our can of refrigerant hooked up to our manifold gauge set which is also hooked up to our HVAC lines here in the truck and what we want to do is make sure that our line here where the refrigerant is running the yellow line is all the way open which it is I've already purged this line to make sure there's no air in it and we're gonna simply just turn this open here and you could hear and possibly see some refrigerant coming through There it goes. You can hear the compressor just kicked on. And we're actually gonna use more than a couple cans here. That's the capacity of this system. And since we need to recharge the entire system, we gotta use about two and one third cans. Our AC is nice and cold. Our coolant is topped off. Last thing to do, let's take it for a spin and see how well it runs. We have gotta to get to a gas station. We are zero miles till empty so let's fill it up before i can actually give you some realistic impressions on this truck well that is really strange i thought for sure that this had a 35 gallon capacity tank and it only took a little bit over 25 gallons which it still might but that wouldn't make any sense it was telling us zero miles till empty now it says we have 385 miles empty and we got a full tank. Right off the bat, I have a very favorable impression of the truck. Rides really good for this big of a truck, but it still does have quite a trucky feeling. It's very tall off the ground and it does have these BF Goodrich all-terrain tires, which look brand new. I mean, they look really nice, but I think that contributes to a slightly truckier, harsher ride. I'm really surprised at how quiet this V8 is. I used to regularly drive an F-150 with the 5.4 engine in it, and it had that noisy, trucky sort of feel. This 6.2 liter is really refined for a V8. And honestly, let's see how the pickup is. I haven't tried it yet. It still is, you know, it drives like a truck. It's definitely not fast, and it doesn't feel like the EcoBoost engines in the new F-150s. Those actually feel quite a bit quicker, quite a bit peppier, but again, we're talking about an F-150 compared to an F-250. This truck is just a whole nother level of capability. Now, there's only a couple things left that we have to do to it. The first is, if you can tell, when I'm driving straight, the steering wheel is off center here. Now, the alignment is clearly out, but it's more of the steering wheel alignment than it actually is the wheel alignment. I could tell because the truck isn't pulling in one direction or another. It's just that the steering wheel is offset, and that's likely due to the accident damage of the car. The steering boxes in these cars are on the frame rails, so if the frame rail moved a little bit, what it did, and I'm about to show you, uh, it will throw the car out of alignment. We're gonna get the framework performed first, then we'll do the alignment, so that way everything works out well. All right, we're back, and before I get out and show you what needs to be done in the frame department, I just wanted to show you some of the interior features of this trim spec. It being a Lariat, everything is leather, and the big thing that I wanted in a truck was right here. A nice big touch screen that has Bluetooth and all the just standard modern day features on it. This is a must have if you're buying any of the Ford trucks. If you don't get this, it comes with a screen like this big. And this has, of course, you know, a backup camera and just a lot of other really nice stuff. One of the hidden things I found right here, this like pop out console that has your auxiliary inputs and stuff in it. And again, just a really nice spec truck. Of course, it's got four wheel drive and everything in it, including the mirrors here, are power fold. Although I don't know how to use them. Oh, look at that, they go in and out, that's pretty cool. 
The last noteworthy repair that this truck needs is right here in the front. If you stand dead center, you could see that the driver's side tow hook right here is actually angled a little bit this way. As far as the passenger side, it looks pretty straight, but this frame is definitely out of alignment a little bit. So this truck needs to be put up on a frame rack where we'll be able to measure and realign the front frame here. I think it's gonna be a very, very minor pull definitely on the driver's side maybe on the passenger side once it is aligned all we'll have to do is put the front bumper on and bolt it in it bolts in in four places on each side one two three four it might sound difficult but it should be pretty simple now the front bumper that came with the truck i can't find any damage on it anywhere it's really strange in really perfect shape even like the fog lights aren't cracked or anything the plastic shroud on the bottom looks perfect we lucked out because this bumper retail would easily be over a thousand bucks all right now for the numbers you guys know that the winning bid on this truck was fourteen thousand two hundred dollars but of course at the auction there are always fees. With all the fees combined with that winning bid, I paid right under $15,000 just to get this truck out of the auction. Now, in order to get it shipped to me, I spent another $500. So the truck damaged in my possession $15,500. As for the parts, the most expensive one, that chrome ring that goes around the grill there, I told you that was a little bit over $300. That chrome upper slat, about $140. All together between those pieces, the radiator was a couple hundred bucks, the condenser was about 60 bucks. Everything, hardware, shrouds, I spent right around $1,000. It was a little bit under, but let's just round. For a really simple final number of $16,500. But wait, of course, we gotta talk about the frame. Now, I'm going to be taking this to YouTube's best frame shop, and that's the V-Tune Garage. I've shown V the photos of this frame, and he's agreed with my assessment. It should be a very straightforward, simple pull. And most frame shops charge you for a frame setup, which is the time it takes to get a car or a truck on their machine and then actually get it in place ready to pull. And most shops around me charge a two-hour setup time, and body shop hours are about $50 an hour. So $100 just to get the car in the shop and on the machine. Now, V told me that this would go by very quickly since it's such a minor pull we got going on here. But let's just calculate worst case scenario, three hours, four hours, that's an additional $200. So our frame could cost us anywhere between a, a couple hundred to $300 to fix. All in, we are in this truck well under $17,000, which is less than half of what they're selling for retail. I think that this was an incredible value and I can't wait till it is completely put back together. Now, if you think that our Super Duty was as super cheap as I do, be sure to hit that like button. Also, if you're not already following me on Instagram, where I unveil our new projects like the F-250 first there, before I do here on YouTube, just go right here, click the link in the description box below. Well, when we take this truck to V-Tunes Garage, we got a special surprise waiting there for you. We're gonna jump right into our next supercar rebuild project. So I hope you'll join me for that. And I wanna thank each and every one of you for watching this.